Let's go to 2004. 2004. How did you decide, like, I'm going to start mapping stuff? Did, did that even start like that? Well, you asked a lot of questions. I was... <laughs> okay, what happens in 2004? <laughs> I was a lot younger, a very different person. So I was working either at the Center for Advanced Spatial Analysis, which is part of, I think it was part of geography at UCL, or or it was the VR Center or some combination of the two, which is part of the Bartlett. So when I was an undergraduate, I, I worked in a number of uh, research departments, primarily looking after computers and doing researchy fun visualization things in the summer. And, you know, I'm sure it was different back then, right? Because the lens of history changes things. But my memory sure. is that a sort of surprise that you couldn't get access to map data, even as a as an academic institution, it was very difficult to get access to map data. Okay. Because it was this proprietary thing. Um, and it just seemed to me that looking at Wikipedia or Linux, you have these complicated environments that ultimately lead to a bunch of open source bits sitting on a disk, right? And if you could do that for encyclopedias and you could do that for an operating system, why couldn't you do that for mapping? And it was all very contentious at stuff at the time, believe it or not. You know, there are plenty of people that told me this was impossible, would never work, yada, yada. And what was interesting to me is that there were other projects at the same time doing the same thing. But they tended to take the approach that we're going to have, you know, mapping professionals go do this, but they're going to do it somehow for free on the internet, right? Um, or we're going to, they typically said, hey, we're going to focus on one data set in one geography, right? So there was one that was mapping footpaths in the UK, Nick Whitelegs project, and there was one mapping roads in Israel. That was freemap.il that became Waze, right? And so the the innovation in OSM wasn't, hey, let's get, get people to do stuff for free necessarily. It was, let's take a customer focused approach. <laughs> That's what you call it today, maybe. And then let's, let's let people map anything anywhere. And then let's rip the bandaid off and just let them do it. Because most of the, in fact, I think all of those projects had some sort of layer of authentication. No, authentication is the wrong word. Uh, verification. Right, you couldn't just go in and edit something like you can in OSM. You had to submit your changes. Someone re would review them and somehow get them into some sort of complicated system, right? But if you lower the barrier to entry, it changes everything. And so that simplicity was what drove the project. Was that you know the API is very simple. It wasn't in the beginning. You know it was. XML RPC and other horrible things from the past, monsters in the deep. Um, but it evolved towards more and more and more and more sim simplicity. And you know, the wonderful thing, by the way, is that OpenStreetMap's data model, um, although it had some tweaks, right, with relations would be one thing that was added. Um, and it also evolved over time when I was in charge of it. But it, it's incredibly simple. And the same API, the same data model, and essentially the same software. It's not really quite true, but at some level, it's the same software that it was in, let's say, 2007, something like that. The point that it evolved to has continued. Um, and that's why this, it, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, inside baseball, but there's proposals inside OpenStreetMap right now to change the data model. And it's like, Let's take the <laughs> let's take the best thing and let's let's see if we can change it and see what happens. Like, yeah, good luck. Um, but it was a different time, and th the thing evolved a lot, right? So the OpenStreetMap you see today, although in many ways looks identical, the the API looks identical and stuff to two thousand seven or whenever the you know zero point six came out, the API version. I don't remember. Um, there was an enormous amount of innovation and stuff that happened in the beginning. It was like this horrible Java project with XML RPC that evolved into the thing that you see today. Like there were Java applets. It was it was uh, whatever the Java enterprise runtime stuff on the server was called, and all that stuff was gone. Um, but the idea was there. And what I did was I just did lots and lots of talks. So in the beginning, I did everything, right? I wrote the server software. And primarily I wrote the server software because nobody else wanted to do it. 
everyone wants to work on the human facing piece, right? The map editor, making pretty display maps, printing them out. But writing the the database code was the most annoying piece that nobody wanted to do. And it just so happened that I had spent a lot of time writing very large SQL queries back then. Um, so I did all that boring stuff. That was one thing. I also ran the mailing lists. Um, I ran the IRC server back when IRC was a thing, another piece of ancient history. Um, what is that? Yeah, exactly. What is IRC? So <laughs> there was a time before Slack. Let's put it that way. Um, really? <laughs> yes. IRC was like Slack, except um, there were no pictures and there was no history. And, <laughs> you know, it was like IRC was like a terrible version of Slack. How about that? Um, uh, so I did all of those things. And then one of the one of the really important things that I did that really came out, I think, in that book that I did, the book of RSM thing, mm-hmm. um, was I also did all the marketing. Well, what today we'd call the marketing. I didn't think of it as marketing at the time, but I, I did a lot of talks. So I spoke, at OS, I spoke about OpenStreetMap on the order of 500 to 1,000 times, something like that, um, literally, no exaggeration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I did that at Linux user groups. Back then there were these things, back, Linux was relatively new even in 2004. Um, and there would be user groups that would talk about cool Linuxy things, right? I'd speak at those. I'd speak at mapping events, um, open source conferences. And it was all about sort of two things. One was evangelizing OpenStreetMap and getting people on board with the idea. And that was relatively easy because a lot of those open source people, they, they grok the idea very easily. Yeah. But they... It, uh, the, they hadn't seen a project that was open source that got you out into the real world, right? It was sitting at home and working on an open source piece of code or something, but OSM was you going out and doing things. So there was sort of that angle. There was also geocaching was big back then, things like that. Um, But it was also about collecting feedback. So going and showing OSM and then people saying, well, OSM is terrible because of X or Y or whatever, and then going and trying and fix it and trying to make it better. and through those two things, sort of iterating a lot of things so that the talk was iterated. I would always ask people, you know, what would you change in the talk that I gave? Like people would say, well, the font was bad or like using the de- using the default font in uh, any of the presentation software is a, is a bad idea. You know, you learn these little things just by talking to lots of people. So um, what should we change in the talk? What should we change in the software? Um, what should the data look like? That kind of thing. And then going back and trying to implement this. And that was the beginning, right? And this is all very Steve-centric. But as the as the mm-hmm. thing progressed, lots and lots of people got involved and did all kinds of crazy things with OSM and, and helped both build the software and spread the word and build the data, right? And it, it took off on its own after that. You know, I did the I did the first conference, or I named the first conference. There are a lot of people that helped in the beginning as well, yeah. of course, like setting up the foundation, you know, although I, I, I did that, it was with a lot of people. And the same with setting up the conference, um, the same with the license change, you know, which is ancient history now, but was a massive deal back then. If you like this, you can actually listen to the full interview right here. Otherwise, I'll catch you next time. Cheers.